Uh, and now we come to the present day. Uh, and so we're, we have the 2023 uh, recipient of the ICO ICDP uh, Galeno Donardo Award, and that's uh, Mohammed Kasim uh, Mehmood. Good afternoon, everyone. So I will start with a verse from famous poet Iqbal. New words drive their pomp from fresh and new thoughts. From stones and bricks, a word was neither built nor grew. With this, my name is Kasim. I'm working as an associate professor at Information Technology University, Lahore, Pakistan. Before moving forward, I would like to thank my institute, ITU, Information Technology University, and Higher Education Commission, Pakistan, for supporting uh, all this research uh, since last uh, six to seven years. Meanwhile, I would like to say thanks to ICTP, ICO, for honoring me with this award to acknowledge the struggle which I did since last six to seven years while staying in a developing country like a Pakistan. Last but not the least, I would like to thank OSA and SPIE societies uh, who are, uh, we have student chapters from these societies at our home institute for providing resources and support to do all the different sort of activities. Thank you, all of you. Here are my outlines. I will start with the introduction of Micro Nano Lab. I am one of the directors of this lab. Then introduction and motivation for my topic, and then research highlights, few of them, and different events and outreach, which we do at our home institute and country. And then I will conclude. I am from Pakistan, which is a South Asian country, neighboring India, China, Afghanistan, and Iran. So we are over here. Despite all the challenges and odds, few rose to the global level to promote science and peace beyond the local borders naming a few great scientists and physicists, Professor Abdus Salam, great education activist, Malala Yousafzai, and great humanitarian, Abdus Tar Edi, who devoted their lives for science and peace. There are few things which are vital in creating a soft image of our country, starting from sports to few highlighted exports. We have international good team for cricket who won a couple of World Cups and IC, ICC Champions Trophy. We have won field hockey four times. And then we were, we are, and we were football exporter for FIFA World Cups. And there are few highlighted ones. Now about me, I did my PhD from National University of Singapore from 2011 to 2016. And after finishing my PhD, I started my journey as assistant. And then back in 2021, I was promoted as associate professor. And my area of research mainly stick with matter devices, light matter interaction at a narrow scale, and I'm direct, one of the directors of this micro nano lab. Here are few topics which we do at our lab. So we actually categorize these topics in two domains. One is for indigenous usage and one is for science and research. For indigenous development, we do customized projects like customized intelligent microscopy. We do high and low frequency electronics for few local projects for indigenous benefits. And for science, we do a projects like metamorgus for smart and rapid designs for meta optical systems, meta absorbers for high energy, for energy harvesting, 
meta lensing based imaging systems and reconfigurable intelligent surfaces for LIFI. This is our lab's website and Facebook page. The existing HR student and staff strength is around is 22 roughly, out of which we have eight PhD students, 11 master's students and three research associates. We have well gender equality, out of these uh, 10 are female students, which make the 45% of the overall strength. So I also want to thank ICTP for providing me opportunity to attend this school and why this was important for me, because we mainly focus on electronics and photonics, and there was a missing link for terahertz to fill this particular gap. These are few projects which we did over the years for electronics. And I, as I have mentioned for the photonic side, we do the development of meta, meta surfaces based devices like microscopy, like light structuring, holography, et cetera. We are not in isolation. We are collaborating from East to West, from academia to industry to skill our students with the state of the art technologies and science where they can secure jobs once they finish uh, once they finish their studies so we always go with the slogan learn to earn it's not moving Still stuck. Okay, this is the research uh, output from electronics to photonics. We were able to publish the top venues, including Nature Publishing Group, ACS, Wiley, Optica, Royal Society of Chemistry, and APS, etc. Few of our works were also highlighted in as a cover page in nanoscale horizon, advanced materials, advanced optical materials, and nanoscale. Now I will go towards the introduction and motivation of why we want to do meta devices. I think we have heard a lot about this optical constants. It has real and imaginary part. Real part actually controls the velocity, velocity, in other words, phase, while the imaginary part is responsible for the absorption in a certain material. So if I take a linearly polarized light, so we have three fundamental characteristics of the wave, polarization, magnitude, and its phase. Okay, I can use this. So all of us familiar with famous Snell's law, which is Snell's law of reflection and refraction for a given medium. So for given refractive indices, light go from one medium to another medium at a fixed location for a given system. And most importantly, this is propagation effect, and we can manipulate the wavefronts of light by using the refractive indices as well as thickness of the material. This is how most of the optical components work. Then it came 2011 when Professor Capasso's group from Harvard University, they introduced this generalized law of reflection and refractions, in other words, generalized Snell's law. And the law was about introducing an abrupt phase change between the two media through sub-wavelength resonators like this. The benefit of doing this kind of thing is shrinking the size to a sub-wavelength sub scale and enabling 
a planar flat optical devices and systems. So metamaterials uh, are beyond natural materials, which can exhibit properties most of the times, which are not possible by natural materials to show. And it is a more broader term, whereas metasurfaces is the specialized version of metamaterials, where we'll talk about surfaces, which can show effect, which are not possible generally through a naturally occurring materials. So if we, see the comparison of natural to metamaterials, natural materials to metamaterials. In natural materials, we have atoms. In metamaterials, the fundamental unit is sub-wavelength meta-atoms, we call them. There are a few examples of metamaterials and metasurfaces over here. Now, to give the motivation why we want to go for meta surfaces and meta devices and meta optical systems, I have taken a couple of examples from Thor Labs. So, if we look at a convex lens, so thickness is roughly 4.2 millimeter for the wavelengths from 350 to 700 nanometer. So, if I take a central more or less wavelength, so the thickness becomes 8400 lambda which is approximately 10 raised to power four lambda. However, if I go to an objective lens, which is a system of train of lenses, now the thickness is around 45.06 mm, which is this much, 10 raised to power approximately five lambda. However, for the meta devices, we can go to the scale of single wavelengths. In other words, we can get a size reduction from 10 raised to power four to 10 raised to power five times. Now, if we look at the conventional optical systems, which are a combination of conventional optical components, obviously, once we will be using conventional system, uh, optical devices, we will have bulky systems like this, microscopy, cameras, AR, VR, goggles, spectrometers, et cetera. And if we can build such systems using meta devices, obviously we can go to an enormous size reduction. Owing to the motivation that was back in 2016, where people started thinking, bringing such meta devices into industry for real time optical, real time applications. This whole area was actually kicked off by Professor Capasso and Mr. Rob is his student. So they are doing different sort of meta lenses and all that. So, so far the story is combining the functional of five optical elements into a single meta optical device. So that is a kind of upper limit as of now. What does that mean? If we want to bring such systems into a chip scale, we need new strategies, new technologies, new underlying physics to further squeeze the size of system and integrate multiple meta devices into a single device. In other words, to introduce multi-functional meta devices. So if we want to go for meta devices and meta optical systems, however, and for the mass acceptance of such systems, the form, far most important thing is rapid design. So conventionally people use computational softwares like FTTD, Lumerical, et cetera, but their optimization requires a long time, really long time, which means we need to come up with, to break the current limits, we need to come up with new design strategies, we need to come up some rapid development and design procedures, and we have to develop large scale fabrication techniques. And then we have to integrate such devices to come up with a compact optical systems. So generally the procedure is we develop the underlying physics, we optimize meta atoms, and then we get this required phase profiles for a given optic, meta device, and then we arrange 
these meta atoms into such kind of two dimensional periodic or aperiodic array according to the given phase mask and then our device is ready and then we do the optimization of train of devices for a given optical system this is a few of our works in terms of optimization where we use ai for optimization this first work was using images where we have three layer of information providing height and structural parameters and all that and eventually we wanted to predict the absorption response of such system and once we are able to get this kind of optimization we apply this sort of transfer learning to the other materials and other shapes to identify the effectivity of our models once this thing was done for magnitude optimization the second thing we wanted to go for phase optimization as well where and we also wanted to have a both ways forward prediction and a reverse prediction so for a given parameters like length width height and periodicity we wanted to have the phase and magnitude of that kind of structure and then other way around if we are given with the phase and magnitude of the response we can predict the structural parameters and this work was highlighted in nanoscale recently published now we are working obviously this is a kind of uh, ever growing story now we are working to develop this kind of metamogus in antennas we have antenna mogus where if we give a specific kind of requirements so it can build the whole system so now the whole optical system will include optimization of meta atoms and then arrangement of such meta atoms for a given device or a phase profile and then putting all these devices together into a system so that is a really useful that would be a real useful tool now coming towards this underlying principle so i have taken one of the meta atoms which we excessively used that is uh, this kind of bars as this is an isotropic kind of structure non smith so it behaves as a nano half wave plate so as we know that half wave plates change left hand circular polarization into right side uh, right hand circular polarization so similarly this kind of uh, nano bar structures nano half wave plate perform the similar kind of effects however the advantage is once this kind of bars convert one polarization circular polarization to other circular polarization we also get this kind of additional phase which corresponds to the rotation of such bars we can understand the underlying mechanism through this even and odd anti parallel parallel magnetic dipoles if we see we have on the longer side we have like four anti parallel magnetic dipoles so ex if entering ex on this side on the other side it always stays in the same direction however if we are looking at the other side so ey is reversing the sign which means we are getting other handed of handedness of the polarization in case of circular so it means we can encode any phase any phase profile of any component in such kind of nano half wave plates we tried different sorts of phase profile integration like spherical lens sp spiral phase plates bessel beams etc and there are experimental and published results of these we wanted to go to add further functionalities into such devices and we came up with a strategy of spin decoupled design where in a single bar we can use it for both sort of handedness and we can add you see in a single bar for left hand polarization and for right hand polarization we can add different functionalities and each fun each handedness can even have multiple functionalities into that which means a single bar can be used for multifunctional as a multifunctional meta device
Similarly, our recent work is going on towards building different sorts of uh, achromat. If we talk about an achromat lens, so we have a spherical lens profile. And then once we change the wavelengths because of this achromatic aberration, there is a delta phase shift between the maximum and the minimum wavelengths. And we need some sort of phase composition. Is it stuck or something? <laughs> Similarly, we have also uh, proposed diatomic structures where we can have now more degree of freedom to add different sort of functionalities. And we have demonstrated chirality and broadband, broadband matter devices for using this kind of strategies. So if you are, any one of you are interested, you can come and we can discuss further because uh, over here, I might not be able to cover all of the techniques we have developed. So as I have mentioned that for such kind of matter devices and meta optical systems require a train of research uh, ideas, including material research, novel theories to break the current limits, smart design and optimization, developing large scale meta devices, meta system design and development. And then we use such systems for some real time applications like intelligent meta microscopy for autonomous diagnostics or some other kind of applications. So we will be very happy to collaborate with students, with professors, mentors, and with industry and some other kind of collaborators. So I would like to shed some light on the events or different kind of outreach activities, which we do from our platform we have active OSA and SPE student chapter where I'm advisor and co-advisor. And there are, these are different members of our teams with some different roles for different uh, chapters. Over the years, we actively involved for different kind of events that includes organizing symposiums, national and international symposiums. We have this upcoming symposium, which we are working with different universities in Pakistan to organize in our ITU main campus that will be in March, 2023. And apart from that, we have several other events like seminars, series, international day of light competitions, like poster competitions for other type of uh, presentation competitions, photo contest, et cetera. And th then we have regular uh, talks and webinars and seminars from these, uh, from these uh, OSA, SPE and HAC funded activities. They are, these are a few pictures from our events. This was, uh, these pictures were taken from these lecture series. And this was, uh, there are a few from the invited talks and seminars. And recently, we have also started one program where we want to go to the government uh, schools 
because in our side, there are some deficiency of experiments and all that. So what we did is for the inter and for ninth and 10th student, we started to kind of developing experiments for them. Those experiments, which they are unable to do in their school because, uh, because of lack of uh, equipments. So we went on to different schools uh, to, the, uh, to do these kinds of experiments and activities. And apart from that, we also go for excursion and different kind of trips to have fun apart from doing, doing these uh, academic activities. These are a few uh, highlighted alumni. I would like to mention uh, Dr. Afnan, he finished a PhD with me and with one of my uh, colleagues, Dr. Tosif. He, he stayed at uh, Me Too. We were working in collaboration with one university in Turkey, and currently he's doing a postdoctoral, he's a postdoctoral researcher in Harriet Watt University. During the course of his PhD, he was able to publish at a prestigious venues, including advanced materials, science advantages, science advances and some other kind of uh, top venues. Dr. Essen is the second PhD student from me. He finished his PhD in 2021 and currently working as an assistant professor at Air University, one of the top public sector university in Pakistan. During the course of uh, his PhD, he was working in collaboration with National University of Singapore where we will be doing uh, uh, lots of experiments and all that. And he physically visited as a research attachment at that university. Dr. Nasser, he also finished PhD back in 2020. And currently he joined uh, recently, just in January as a postdoctoral researcher at King Abdullah University of Science and Technology with one of our collaborators. And these are kind of venues where he has uh, published his research works, including nanoletters, uh, nanoscales, et cetera. Dr. Saad finished PhD in 2020, and currently he joined as a postdoctoral research, uh, post researcher at KNU. Uh, he was uh, at uh, KAUS during the course of his PhD, towards the end of his PhD. And similarly, Tamur finished his PhD in 2022, and he joined as assistant professor at one, one of the public sector universities in Pakistan. So far, since 2016, we were able to produce five PhD students. Three of them, uh, three of them have joined uh, as a postdoctoral researchers at overseas university, and two of them joined as a assistant professors in Pakistani universities, and all of them are very active in research. We were able, from our micro nano lab, we were able to produce 17 master's students, and we take the pride that all of them are having decent jobs, or either they are pursuing higher studies. And we were able to produce 18 uh, undergraduate thesis. And we have kind of well-balanced gender equality as well. With this, I would like to uh, conclude by saying that as the nature of project, and there are lots of uh, other projects which are going on. So obviously there are lots of possibilities to collaborate and we have, all, we have also started this kind of outreach and social impact and that, that, side of, uh, that sort of activities. I would like to invite you to collaborate, students, uh, mentors, industry, humanitarian, so at the end, I would like to say, let's join hands to use science as a tool to propagate peace, harmony, and love beyond social, religious, and territorial boundaries. Thank you very much. Very nice message to close with, thank you. All right, uh, open for questions. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Kasim, for your nice presentation. I don't have a question. Uh, it's just a comment that the new name of OSA is Optica. We don't call it OSA anymore. Yeah, yeah. So okay. it's yes, just yes, Optica. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Optica has a response to that. <laughs> Any questions? Any other questions? Yep. Uh, could you uh, be? Uh, could you give a little more detail on your uh, meta surfaces based on AI neural networks? Uh, you showed some slides on yes, meta surfaces. Yes. Yeah, could you just give a little more detail how those work and uh, what kind of uh, simulation softwares you use for those? Oh, okay. So yes, as I have mentioned, uh, we use uh, this kind of AI deep learning uh, methods. Uh, for two kinds of things. One is uh, optimization of unit cell. Uh, and it is, uh, we use Google Colab because it is free and Python, obviously. And uh, then there are two different types of techniques where you use uh, image-based techniques to use uh, image-based techniques to extract the features, to extract and also kind of, uh, if you want to get those, those kinds of features, image-based techniques for unit cell optimization. So because if we use a CST or lumericals, generally if we go for a specific material, so it takes like one month for all these optimization. And you also need a license for such kind of, uh, to use such kind of softwares. However, if you are using AI, obviously you need uh, your brain, that's all. And the biggest advantage apart from that is the uh, rapidness. For example, once you have, uh, uh, once you have this kind of training network, it hardly takes like a uh, few minutes to get the desired parameters. And another very important uh, advantage for this kind of deep learning techniques, you see, for example, if we are using a conventional uh, conventional software, so for example, if you change the spectrum, you change the material, you change the scenario, so every time you have to re-optimize, which means you go in the cycle of same, like one, two months of optimization. So this is one like unit cell optimization. And then the second thing is making the complete device. So for example, if you want to build a achromat, multifunctional achromat, some other holography, et cetera. And now you see once we have optimized meta atoms, then you have to place those meta atoms to build the device. Now the second phase is to train your algorithms for a given phase masks, for a given phase mass so that you can get such kind of distribution. So it's more like a unit cell and material optimization towards the device optimization for a desired goal. Yeah, that kind of thing. We can further discuss, I mean, if you are interested. Yeah, uh, another question? Thank you. Thank you for the nice talk. Um, I was just uh, curious, let's say, um, this is a further step compared to the meta optics um, after, for example, diffraction optics now, because I heard a similar statement like 20 years ago that diffraction optics is going to replace conventional optics now. And it didn't for some reasons that uh, I haven't analyzed, but it seems that you cannot, uh, although everything uh, seems possible theoretically, then uh, uh, there are limitations on the real life production of these components. So I was wondering, uh, are there fundamental limitations also here, or there is a real possibility that uh, because you are sub-wavelength, then you don't have some of the limitations met, uh, that the diffraction optic has, yes. so that uh, at one point we really see a chromatic lens is uh, made this way, no? Yes, yes. Uh, thanks. Uh, I would say that uh, at the fundamental level, at the design level, there are, to be honest, uh, no certain limitations. And with the growth of these theories, these theories can be built. The actual limitation is technological restrictions, how far we can go. So if they, I mean, currently, if we can go for the wafer technology, such kind of devices will eventually come. And actually it is coming with the passage of time because conventionally to build this kind of uh, techniques, people use electron beam lithography. 
and which cannot build the big structures, but now people are going for nano imprinting and some other devices to build the bigger devices. So the point is technology is rapidly evolving in this direction. Uh, and I believe, not only believe, and I think it is uh, very much possible. Obviously it cannot replace the whole optical systems, but at several places you can put such kind of meta lenses and meta devices to shrink the sizes, yes. Any other question? Mm, no. Well, at any rate, uh, Kazim, I really, I, I like your message. And I think it's, you know, it's obvious for us that we can, we're all here from uh, many different cultures, religions, and then places. And it's, pretty, it's absolutely obvious that we're communicating about the same thing. Yes. Uh, our slides could be interchanged. Uh, but that's perhaps not obvious to everybody. But I think as scientists are really... Uh, uh, setting an example for, for the rest of humanity, just because we're just doing it. And I think it just comes natural uh, for us, but I think it's an important message. I think, I hope uh, peace will come, <laughs> yes. and, and especially in your region, because that's, uh, we, we know it's just been difficult. So thank you again. Let's thank uh, Chasm again for a wonderful talk.